attack life sober and you'll achieve so much more in a shorter time frame. What would you say if somebody is facing challenges and they're facing life sober, doing everything right, they're taking actions, they holding a belief, and they still just can't get right? Yeah, so if they're sober, they're meditating every day, and they have a firm belief on what they want to create, but it's not fur fully materialized yet, right? They haven't fully manifested it. Like, they can see it, but it's not in their possession. Best way to act at that point is to detach from the outcome, right? Don't care if you get it or not, and allow the experience to flow to you, right? Because when you're so strenuous, you need something so badly, you push it away from you because that means you're in lack, you don't have it. If you're in abundance mindset, you don't, you're do you not wondering where things are, they just immediately come to you. So if you have that mindset and you take action based on that mindset, you'll achieve everything you want. I slip up too, like for instance right now where um, I found an investor for the space company, committed, he said he's interested, he's motivated, and all I need right now is the cash in hand so I can pay my employees full time and build up the prototype. So right now I'm dealing with the same situation and all I can do is meditate, reach out to the investor, make sure it's comfortable for him and they enjoy the process and that they're gonna get a big return. And if we set this as that mission to where no matter what, you're gonna make a return because you know we have other revenue sources, then it should be a no-brainer. I should experience it as if it's an already reality we're living. So every day we wake up, like we imagine we already have the cash in hand, we're already executing on this, this, and this. And before you know it, you'll experience that reality. Who was the first person to tell you that the type of theory or the type of philosophy? Actually, the quantum physics model of reality, it's, it's kind of like a de facto experiment now. It's the double slit experiment. Basically, without being complicated, they found that atoms change when people observe them which means our consciousness influences the reality we experience and on a fundamental level our consciousness is just our thoughts our beliefs and our actions our thoughts and our beliefs is what our consciousness perceives as our world and then our actions are the things we do with our physical body based on those belief systems like imagine you're elon musk every day and then imagine you're a homeless person every day they have different thoughts they have different belief systems and they take different actions. And you can say, yes, external factors set up someone way better if they're born into a wealthy family, yes. But there's been countless rags to riches stories where people changed their thoughts and beliefs and then their actions supported those new belief systems. So it's as simple as that. You, you get a hold of those three things and you can have a drastically different experience in life. What would you say about taking risks or not taking risks? Always take people? risks. The, uh, when you have nothing to lose, like you don't have any kids to deal with, all you have to do is cover your rent and food, take as many risks as possible because those risks will pay off and then some in the long term, right? Like Jeff Bezos had a cushy, comfortable job and then he left it to pursue Amazon. Now at the time that might have seemed like a terrible idea because it was very risky, but now he's one of the richest people in the world by building out Amazon. So that just goes to show, take risks because the difference between winners and losers is losers give up. And that's the only difference. Is losers the only up. difference between winners and losers is losers give up. Because if you play the game long enough, you will eventually win. It goes perfectly into our next question. Which is worse, failing or never ever trying? Obviously, never ever trying. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. It's okay to fail. It, it actually should be encouraged more in school to fail. Because entrepreneurs fail tons of times before they succeed. Like you only ever hear the overnight success. It's never an overnight success. They spent years developing skills to become that perceived overnight success. How do you think you will affect the world vision of what the American dream is? I mean, today, what's the American dream, right? It's to have a comfortable place to live, food to eat, and be able to take care of your family. So for the most part, you could get a normal nine to five job and have that experience. If you want to really thrive, create like generational wealth, obviously you're gonna have to go into business for yourself, whether that's creating your own business, getting into real estate, learning stocks, or even the new age is crypto, which is like the new age stocks. Whatever that field is, just pick one and dedicate your life, your mission to learning it to the best of your abilities, developing mastery in it, and then you'll have dividends constantly throughout the rest of your life.
What are some good learning sources for learning about lucid dreaming and also manifestation? Do you recommend school? I mean, check out all of our YouTube content. We, we share everything for free on YouTube. And then for only two bucks, uh, you can take our six week intensive course and that will make you a consistent lucid dreamer. And then I think the children's books like 12 bucks, you know, it's, we try to make things as affordable as possible. And of course there's always higher ticket options, you know, that are several grand where it's like one-on-one -on -one, uh, experiences. But if you're motivated enough to achieve a goal, you can find the information and execute on it, right? As, and that's why we make it as easy as possible to find the information. You just go to foreverlucid.com, sign up, you get instant access. What would you consider the meaning of life? The meaning in life is to live. Treat every day as if it's your last, because one day you'll be right. Adding on to that next question, is there such thing as a perfect life? Yes, there's this word, it's called the Ubermensch. It's basically uh, the concept of someone lives such a perfect life that when they die, they wanna just relive that exact same life because it was so perfect, they did everything they could ever hope to do. Uh, so it's kind of like a heaven loop, right? Where they keep reliving the best of the best experiences. So there is a perfect life where you dedicate your mission to service of others. You don't concern yourself with materialistic things, but you can enjoy them. And you create a family, whether it's just some loved ones, whether it's you adopt kids, whether you two have kids, it doesn't matter. Just find people you can love and who love you. If it's anywhere on the planet you can go, where and why? I've traveled the world a lot and I kind of realized that everywhere is pretty much the same because you're always the same person experiencing the event. So you can have experience different settings, look at different cultures with different languages, but people tend to be the same. Everyone's kind and compassionate if you look for those attributes. And as long as you have a positive mindset, you'll experience a positive reality. What is your happiest childhood memory and how did it affect you today? I mean, I'm kind of living it now. My happiest childhood memory was learning how to lose a dream the first time. And that kind of set in stone pretty much every decision I made up until this point. If you don't mind me asking, what was that first dream? It, it was getting rid of a repeating nightmare. Uh, I was being chased by a scary monster and then finally I learned how to lucid dream. So instead of, you know, destroying the monster, I actually talked to it. And uh, it was obviously, it's just a reflection of your own subconscious. So it, it tries to tell you what you're going through and work through that. And then I was able to come to terms with that and I've never had a nightmare since. Did he tell you anything valuable? Yeah, at the time it was very valuable. In three words, could you explain your lifestyle? Health, wealth, happiness. Explain the three words. So health is your mental health and your physical health, making sure you meditate and exercise on a daily basis. Your wealth is your active income and your passive income, preferably doing something you enjoy on a daily basis. And your happiness, they did a 50 year index on what made people the happiest. And it wasn't how much money they made, it was the relationships they had with their family. So having strong love interests and a good family relationships and dynamics with your siblings or your parents or your loved ones, that's the most important thing that will create a happy life. So health, wealth, and happiness. What would you say is the greatest challenge? Uh, figuring out how to instantly manifest what I want like I can in lucid dreams. In a lucid dream, you can snap your fingers and get anything you want. In this physical waking world we call reality, there seems to be a time delay associated with experiences we have. So trying to figure out how to instantaneously create any given reality in this waking world is a challenge I'm still working on today. I think it's possible to master it. There seems to be Buddhist monks who have complete control over their reality. So I think that it's it's a possible experience you can have. And how would you explain the Buddhist teachings and the Buddhist manifestations compared to a more Americanized perspective? Well, if you actually look into what it takes to be a Buddhist monk, right? They get rid of all material possessions. They don't have love interests and they just meditate all day. Now that may be empowering to them and they might have great meditation experiences and everything like that. But I think the Western world ideal of creating that heaven on earth while we're living, you know, maximizing, you know, you can have cool cars, nice houses to live in, but at a certain point you just need a bed to sleep in and loved ones surrounding. Um, and if, if you treat life like that, and you there you don't always have to have more and more and more you can just enjoy what you have and then more will flow to you i think that is a much happier existence what would you say what do, what is the defi definition of success the definition of success is getting control of your health your wealth and your happiness and once somebody have all three of those completed they should be happy the fourth step after you get a hold of your health wealth and happiness obviously there's you can always be healthier, you can always be happier, you can always be wealthier. But once you reach a level where you're thriving, the fourth step is legacy. 
And what legacy is, it's what you leave behind after you're gone. So what organization, what charities, what businesses, what relationships will you instill that further generations can enjoy? And if you can set those up to where many, many generations long after you're gone can still enjoy those resources, you did the right thing. Look at libraries. Libraries were set up by people generations ago, and people can still go in there and learn new information, get access to free internet and books available to pursue any goal, any career they want. That's a perfect example. Great libraries, or now that we have the internet, you know, those aren't needed as much, but you know, there's always something else, like maybe create new types of school systems that are less um, about creating employees and more about creating entrepreneurs, things like that. Something that's helping the world and helping past generations and future generations. Anything where you can instill a belief and empower other people to achieve their goals, that would be a good legacy to leave behind. What is something that you cannot buy with money? Love. Why is love so expensive? Love is free. It's priceless. It's infinite. Could you manifest love for another person? Yes. Uh, you will attract what you believe you are. So any relationship you get in, it's usually a reflection of your own subconscious. Because remember, everyone's just a reflection of you. We're all the same infinite consciousness having a brief human experience. Do you believe in heaven? I believe we can create any reality we choose through the power of our thoughts, beliefs, and actions. Whether you have positive thoughts and create a type of heaven on earth, or you have negative thoughts and create a type of hell on earth, that's completely up to you and the power of your own subconscious mind. Where do you find the most strength when you need it? I rely on my team, my loved ones, and my mind. And other than being called the Dream Master, what name do you like to go by? I mean, my birth name is Ian Trans, but I've always liked the name Ian Forever. We originally created the company Forever Lucid, and I thought that would be cool to have like a stage name of Ian Forever, and then like one day legally change it. I think that might be cool. But uh, the names are immaterial, right? So it, it's just like, it's a fun thing to do, but it, it doesn't really impact your life too much. It's like Kanye West going to Kanye going to Ye. It's like, it's meaningless, but it makes you feel good in the moment. Yeah. What is your greatest skill you have? The greatest skill I have is never giving up. I might uh, deviate from courses, but I always maintain the long vision ahead. And I think that's important. You have a grandiose vision you want to achieve. You believe you're already there and then you take the actions that support that vision. What did you want to be when you were younger and how did it change to now? When I was younger, I wanted to be the world's richest person. And I still want to be that, but now I want to be it for different reasons. When I was younger, I thought it'd be cool to live in mansions, drive fast cars, but now it's I realized that if I had access to that much capital, I could drastically improve the world. I could end world hunger, poverty, and disease. We could actually create world peace, even with different ideological or uh, border perspectives of what we think government should be. It, there is enough money in the world. There's enough food and resources to make everyone have a comfortable and happy life where we empower each other rather than just handing it out. How would you consider yourself pursuing your dreams right now? I'd say there's more I can do. There's always more actions you can take. Um, and then having a positive mindset is probably the most important paramount experience to instill a new reality for yourself. So if you can get a hold of your mindset, you can take the proper actions in a good mindset to achieve all of the goals. And I, I, I always have to work on that too, right? Like you gotta practice what you preach. But we meditate too, we, we create our realities. And sometimes it works out immediately and sometimes it takes some time.